Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Abundant Wellness Podcast. We have Miss Beth Learn here today. Uh, Beth Learn is the founder of Fit to Be um, and has a crap load of certifications that <laughs> we're just going to call it that. And I'm going to let you, Beth, kind of share a little bit about who you are and what you do. And today we are going to be talking about women's hormones, how fitness uh, impacts our hormones, how our hormones impact our fitness. And we'll just kind of have a great conversation around all of that. But welcome. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So tell us, what do you do? Who are you? What are the things you're, you share about? Well, um, I am the mother of two teenagers, one who is home from college for the summertime right now as we record this, and one who is sleeping in, probably his last summer of sleeping in, so I'm letting him. And uh, I live on Seven Acres, a little hobby farm here in Southwest Washington, actually pretty close to Andrea, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. We bumped into each other at the mall recently. I was like, oh, I know yeah. that was so fun. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> well, what's so funny about this? I, I was like, I hope I don't run into anyone because I have no makeup on. <laughs> I don't match like it's laundry day. And isn't that just how life works? Yes. But every time I think yeah. that I run into somebody that I know, but it was so mm -hmm. fun to see you in person. Cause I think that's actually the first time we've met in person. So that right? was, that was pretty fun. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the same way. Whenever I look homeless, I see everybody and my pastor. Yeah. And when I look great, I don't run into anybody. No one, no one. Nope. That's what just how that? it works. Yeah. Anyways, I'd like to um, know. I am currently 45 and I got certified as a group fitness instructor for the first time when I was 18. I started working in athletic clubs when I was 16. So I have been living the fitness lifestyle and industry for over half my life, more like two thirds of my life wow. at this point. And I truly enjoy it. Over the years, I have completed a degree in exercise and sports science. I have gotten multiple certifications, basically certified in everything except Zumba. Okay. <laughs> um, and I'm currently working on completing my breast cancer rehab coaching certification, which will allow me to come alongside doctors, nurses, practitioners, physical therapists that are working with people that have had mastectomies um, and are going through chemotherapy and be able to help them get moving again and do fitness wow. that's going to benefit their lymph system and benefit those healing tissues. And it's pretty awesome. I'm learning that's a lot. Amazing. That's amazing. And I, one of the things I love about you, besides the fact that you teach fitness in a way that is I've never seen anybody do before where like your cueing is so good, meaning like you're, you're always cueing us in how to use our muscles, what it should feel like, mm -hmm. what it shouldn't feel like. Um, it's very body friendly, meaning we're not here to like beat our body to death, you know, just for yeah. fitness. Um, but I love that you're always learning. I'm the same way where it's like, whatever certifications I have, they're never enough. <laughs> I always <laughs> want more. Yeah. Um, mainly because I, I just feel like we're better able to serve our clients when we have as many tools in our tool belt that we possibly can have. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I've been using fit to be for my own fitness workouts. I was even just telling, telling Beth before we hopped on that, um, I have a slight scoliosis and I was sleeping on an air mattress all weekend, which is not my favorite. And I know every single time that I'm going to have back problems when I get back, and really wanted to do some weights and I couldn't do them the normal way that I do them. So I've just been sitting here lifting in between clients and engaging my core and making sure that I've got good posture. Um, so there's a million different ways that we can support our movement and our body uh, without overcompensating, without injuring ourselves, without you know, wrecking our hormones. And oh, sure. so today I thought it would be really fun to talk a little bit about how fitness impacts our hormones, specifically women's hormones, and maybe more specifically as we age, because it is very different. Once we get to like our late thirties, early forties, fitness mm -hmm. is different. The impact on our body is different. Our hormones are different. So can you share with us a little bit about, about that? And we'll just kind of dive in. Yes. So everybody is familiar with the word estrogen. It gets a bad rap in a lot of circles. 
as I learn more about it and realize it's so crucial to my health and not just female health, but male health, it's really this protective hormone that pads and cushions all the things that is made from fat and therefore, you know, it's a fat-based molecule. Yeah. Um, and so as females, we have more estrogen than men. Men have more testosterone, but we both have a little bit of those other things. It's like a little yin-yang circle, right? Mm -hmm. um, but as we age, as our egg makers slow down, mm -hmm. as our uterus winds down, as all that stuff winds down, we start making less estrogen. But the inverse of that is we tend to start putting on more fat. Likely because estrogen feeds on fat and our stress levels, our stress levels go up, especially if you're part of the sandwich generation, like I am, where I just went through four months of traumatic caregiving for my mother-in-law who mm -hmm. was in our home with dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, all the things and passed away in our home just mm -hmm. a little over six weeks ago at this point. Yeah. And I was also taking care of a teenager. So that's that sandwich generation of we're still raising kids, but we're also taking care of elderly parents. And that's yeah. been identified as the highest stress period of life. Wow. That also overlaps us going through the change. Woohoo. Perimenopause. Yay. Right? Yeah. So now, now you you have less estrogen, which is your nesting, loving, use all the fat hormone. And it's going down right as our stress levels are going up. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> And we get, and so then we're probably not exercising as much. And yep. so we're going to, we don't talk about like, well, okay, we have so little time to exercise and it, it, it gets real paradigm shifting and becomes a paradox when we realize we, we need to exercise to balance our hormones, but we don't have time or energy. Yep. And that's a real mind melter. Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. It's a big challenge. And I, you know, my girls are 13 and a half and almost nine. And I think I had in the back of my head, like once they're out of the toddler stage, like I'll have more time, which has not been true because no, they're just, just as busy. It's just different. And sometimes I, like I, I can negotiate for more time in terms of like, I want to do a 20 minute workout on my own. Um, but one of the things that I have found once I kind of got over that hurdle and realized I'm not going to find more time, I have to just give myself the time that I like, I just have to give it to myself mm -hmm. and I just have to make it happen the same way that I make healthy meals happen, right? Yeah. The same way that I brush your teeth. go to the grocery store or I brush my teeth. Like these are things that have to happen. And and I'm realizing that it is a it is a missing piece to women's health, especially once we hit our 40s, especially I'm not there yet. But I would say definitely if you have not, not been if you were like me and you are not a good exerciser. Putting your fitness <laughs> first, whatever yeah. you want to call that, that was air quotes, by the way, uh, for those of you that are listening um, and you find yourself in this place where, like Beth was saying, that your stress is higher and you're accumulating more fat and you are more tired, um, then we have to do the thing that feels the opposite of what we should do. Mm -hmm. Like it is the opposite of everything we feel like doing, right? Which is Ugh. to move our bodies. Mm -hmm. And for me, what that looked like was I went to Ross and I got a pair of three pound weights because they were on clearance, right? And I was like, I'm just going to start here and I'm just going to start with a five minute arm lift workout video and pay really close attention to how my core feels and how my spine feels when I'm lifting. Like that's my only goal. Now, my bigger goal is to stop accumulating so much fat, lower my cortisol and also like not have crappy estrogen mm -hmm. <laughs> when I get to menopause. That's the bigger goal. Yeah. But, like when you start with something small, like just doing yes. the thing that feels really hard and that's moving when you're stressed out and you have no energy um, because that's what gets in. Like if we're thinking about breaking up this monster cycle, right. Of like, I'm tired. I'm gaining weight. My cortisol is really high. I'm not sleeping very good. We have to get in there and disrupt yep. the cycle by doing something different. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think of it like a circle of dominoes. Mm -hmm that are cemented in place. 
and you want to knock those dominoes over because you're stuck in this circle of dominoes. And, but if you maybe be feeling like you're knocking the wrong one over and you're overthinking and, and, or maybe you feel like your dominoes are constantly falling and you need them to please stand up and stay in place. Mm -hmm. So if you can start cementing a few dominoes in place, it's a metaphor that can go both ways. Right. And if I could give listeners one thing, it would be exactly what you just said. Pick up some hand weights. Yep. Because as I keep my ear to the ground, and I was just talking about this in my Instagram stories yesterday, with all the research, my colleagues, what they're talking about, and you know, and I'm in all these group of pelvic health therapists, core fitness specialists, um, like the the people who are training the therapists, the people who are training the trainers. Um, I have really good connections with them. So I'm, and I'm about to get some research published in a journal. And so I'm talking with those people that are publishing research, right? Weightlifting, weightlifting continues to rise to the top of all of the research in terms of what helps our hormones and our mental health and our bone density the most. Absolutely. And bone density is not usually on women's radar. Like we've all heard of brittle bone disease or like the dowager hump, the grandma hump. Um, yeah. But we dissociate from it, I think. And what helped me to really click in with it a few years ago was hearing the statistic that over age 40, women spend more time in the hospital dealing with bone density related issues than wow. breast cancer. Holy moly. Breast cancer makes the news and it gets our attention because hello, it's about our boobs and boobs are sexy and they feed our babies. And you know, that's like, it's, you know, they're, they're, don't want to yeah. mess with the boobs. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> God forbid. But meanwhile, what's actually killing us is bone issues at a yep. higher rate. And over age 65, falls are the number one killer. And what tr- contributes to falls is strength, balance, and the bone density. Because if you fall and break something because you right. have brittle bones, that's the issue. If you fall and you don't break something because you can get right back up again and your bones haven't broken because they're strong. And what builds healthy bones? Weightlifting. Resistance. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Resistance training. You know, when I say weight, I mean like anything that feels a little bit difficult to you. And let's, let's be honest, some days just picking up a kid or picking up the groceries feels difficult. Mm-hmm. So right. we can, we can work on weightlifting with little things and we can work on it with big things. Um, mm-hmm. But it's really fascinating to me how resistance training Stuff that makes us pull and push harder, but also go slower, Yeah, right? I'm not talking about you needing to do CrossFit. There's a place for that, right? Um, Like if you work up to that level and you want to try that out and you're ready for that and you can work with a really good coach that can talk about your pelvic floor and core and not ruin your knees or anything else in the process. Great. Yep. Those are kind of hard to find. Yeah. that type of movement does something unique to our testosterone and insulin levels that nothing else does. Yep. So our ability to digest food and also cortisol, like weightlifting is a cortisol mopper. Yep. Just the other day I got into it with my youngest, my son, he's so much like me. We butt heads all the time. And I had to shut my door in my, in his face because he was being that stinky was the best choice at the time. <laughs> uh-huh. I was like, I need a break. I need, I need to, I need to calm down. Cause he, he actually was the one that was like, we need to talk about this. And I'm like, I'm not ready to talk to you about this. You are pushing all my buttons right now. I need you to step back. And he did yep. not want to step back. Yep. Um, and so I was like, listen, you're, I, I need, I need a time. And, <laughs> um, so I went in, I'm here. I went into this room. And I was like, I need, I need to lift some weights. Today's a weightlifting day. Anyways, I try to do it two or three times a week, but you know, when you're in that zone, you're like, Oh, so angry. I'm so frustrated. Where do I even start? You have to switch gears. You have to take your mind off that issue. And I just told myself, just start picking things up and putting them down. Right. Yeah. Just, just pick, pick the things up somewhere Them down. (laughs) Yeah. And I put in my AirPods turned on some loud music, you know, and before I knew it three or four minutes in my thoughts about what I needed to do with him, were starting to assemble themselves in the back of my head. Yep. While I was focusing on counting reps, you know, cause that's the, when you weightlift, you breathe, 
and Mm -hmm. you can't and you tune into your body and it brings you back into the present and you're not in the flighty state of fighting and flighting and yes, and anger being and angry and I need to fight this fight and seeing totally. red and blah, blah. So it takes all that cortisol and all that adrenaline, focuses it on a healthy, safe task yep. where you're not lifting and throwing your child, you're lifting and throwing some weight. <laughs> But did you imagine that though? That is my question. <laughs> um, so, some, I mean, I love my child. I am not an abusive parent, but it, I do find it cathartic with like, especially my, my slam ball. Yeah. There's a 20 pound ball that you can pick up and throw it on the ground and it like morphs yeah. into different shapes. Yeah. I do find it very cathartic to think about different people's faces. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yep. Healthy outlet, you know, right? Real people. And yes. And then, and then you feel better. And I'm, and, and then I was ready to go tell my husband to go talk to my son. Yes. (laughs) And then you had, yeah. And then you had a more reasonable way to deal with the situation instead of being in that, like, yeah. And so, so I think when we're talking about, I was actually, I was just talking to a practitioner friend of mine about this, that, you know, I used to think people were crazy when they'd say, oh my gosh, I feel so good when I lift weights. Right. And I'm just like, you must be a different person than me because I can't imagine that feeling good. Like now I realized that there were some things metabolically, like that I was missing some nutrients that actually helped me to be able to exercise and Mm -hmm. not feel completely depleted, like super low iron, um, super low minerals that, and and electrolytes that really is a big problem if you're going to be lifting. But I did, I had a similar moment like three weeks ago where I was really upset about something. I don't remember what it was now. And I was like, I just need to lift something heavy. And like my heavy right now is a 12 pound weight. So like, that's not awesome. huge, but like, I've been working up to that. So I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm just going to lift and I'm going to lift until I feel a shift. And I'm just going to pay attention to how long that takes. Yep. And it was about 12 minutes of different reps and different movements. And, and all of a sudden I felt like I was dripping in sweat. Like normally it would take me a good 45 minute walk to like get that much sweat release. And all of a sudden I was like, Oh, that's what people are talking about. Like the endorphins, I could feel my Mm -hmm. cortisol go down. I could feel my stress response was better. And then I had this like burst of energy that got me through all the other tasks that I had to do throughout the afternoon. So it's kind of like, Mm -hmm putting pieces together in a puzzle. We're trying to get out of this fatigue slump, right? Where we're, mm-hmm. we're tired, we're stressed out, we're frustrated. And so all we want to do is sit and turn on Netflix and eat cookies and cry, right? right? right. <laughs> and throw a pillow at something. Um, and so we have to do the things that are going to help us to feel better. And I used to think, and I'm, I'm talking about the way that I used to think because I I am positive. I'm not the only one that got stuck here was that if I'm going to lift weights, I have to do it every single day. I have to have a nice weight set. I have to have a space in my house that fits that, which, uh, newsflash. I am at my desk. This is where I've I've been running my desk. (laughs) I've been in the fitness industry and have been running like over two thirds of my life, been running fit to be for a third of my life. This is the first time in my life I have had most of a room dedicated to fitness equipment. Yep. Just only the last couple of months. Right. My fitness stuff has been scattered and I only got this big set a few months ago. Yeah. Because I was ready for it. Yeah. Right. Which is, that's what I'm saying though. Like I had all these, you know, I would watch YouTube weightlifting videos and I'm like, I don't have a room light. Like you automatically oh. disqualify yourself. Let's talk about that. Let's yes, talk about because- what we see. You have always done such a great job of like, I think one of the very first weightlifting videos I watched you do was like, and if all you have is a can of beans, just grab some canned food from the pantry and just lift that. And I was like, that I do have. Cause at that point I didn't even have weights to use. They weigh like 15 ounces or 16 ounces. That's a pound. Yeah. Yes. So let's talk about what we see because I, 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 like I said, I can guarantee you that I am not the only one that has had those thoughts and then automatically disqualified myself from the process because I felt like it had to look a certain way. Yes. Yeah. So, not just the environment. Right. But if we, if we look yeah. at the fact that, that, um, 
fitness is six dimensional. Wellness is six dimensional. Um, I took a whole course in college on the biopsychosocial dimensions of fitness. And it's like, you have, let's see if I can list them. Emotional, physical, mental, social, environmental, spiritual. Nice. Right. All of those categories affect your well-being. All of those categories affect each other. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe that like my physical well-being and the choices I make with my physical body can impact my emotional well-being, my psychological well-being, my spiritual well-being. And I remember one time somebody confronting me and saying, well, I think that, that fitness is just a crutch and you just need to pray more. And I'm like, okay, but hold up. Yes, the praying. I believe in God. Mm-hmm. I'm a Christian, straight up. But I also believe that God gave me this body to use and he designed it to need movement, to move, to thrive in movement. And at this day and age, at this point in our human timeline, we have outsourced so much movement yep. that we really no longer need to move. It's like that movie, the iRobot movie, where they're all yes. just in chairs. Floating around. We, yeah. We are at that point, really, right now. Yep. And in just a hundred years ago, if you were upset, if you were struggling emotionally, there would have been 59 tasks waiting for you that mm-hmm. needed your focus and needed your movement to do them. And it would have taken your mind off of this issue. It would have got you moving. It would have helped you process. You know, if you're in a cave, you would have been doing the caveman thing. If you were, if you were um, a hunter gatherer, you're, you're doing the hunting and the gathering. It, right. You're a wanderer in the wilderness. You're doing the wandering in the wilderness. It, yep. So, so much walking, so much food processing, food <sighs> gathering and hunting is involved still today in many, many tribes around the world. We are so pampered. We don't have that. And so therefore we actually have to create it. We have to yeah. make a mental choice to, hmm. I need to go do something. And it's really weird because it's actually not natural and therefore it can be viewed as a crutch. Right. But at the same time, it's perfectly natural. Right. It's perfectly natural. But but what we see people doing usually online, circling back to that and where I was going with this is we see them doing movement as this big, sweaty, muscly mess. Yeah. And we think that that's what it has to look like, that it has to hurt to work and it doesn't. Right. That it has to be every day for an hour until you hurt and can't walk the next day. And that's the badge of a good workout. Yep. No, I call BS. <laughs> yep. Good. <laughs> it's not, it's just not true. Um, in fact, your muscles need 48 hours to rust. And I don't mean like rust, you lay flat for 48 hours. I mean, they right. need to not be picking up more heavy things for the next 48 right. hours. So that they can rebuild. So the DNA and RNA can go in there and talk to each other and grab the proteins Mm -hmm. and rebuild the cells and say, well, that was tough. Let's rebuild these cells stronger. Let's bulk these things up. Let's make sure these are more resilient the next time she does that to us. It's, it's a pretty cool process. Oh, hold on. Right. Nope. So when we, when we give our bodies that resting time, we get get better. And our bodies begin to think we're not just running from a bear every time we exercise. And that's the problem is when we approach fitness as all or nothing, go big or go home. Then our system doesn't understand that we are not running from a bear. They think we're in fight or flight. Right. So we slow it down. Yep. We space things out. We give our bodies lots of variety. And we tune into how our hormones are handling the workouts. And we tune into what are we doing to fuel these workouts? And if you're, like you said, if you're ending and exhausted, what would you say, Andrea? So <clears throat> what would you say is important? Sorry, I've got to turn, I'm getting like notifications from somebody. No, but like if somebody is finishing their workouts and they're totally exhausted and it's not a long workout and really it's mm-hmm. not necessarily a very hard workout. What does that mean hormonally? Yeah, that's a really good, really good question. So I would be thinking about a couple things. I would be wondering if they're sleeping, if they're, if they're getting good quality sleep, if they're waking up multiple times a night, 
uh, which is usually cortisol, blood sugar dysregulation, which then would make me wonder what are they, what does their eating look like throughout the day? And so typically what I hear from women when I really dive into, let's talk about nourishment, how much are you eating? What are your meals like? They are going way too long between meals and they are eating way too few calories. And I'm like, and, and within that, of course, they're not getting protein. They're not getting enough carbs to even consider fueling a workout. Like, Mm -hmm. so far below what you would even need to just sit on the couch and breathe (laughs) for the day, you know, like your metabolic load. So, so usually what I focus on with them before we even start adding in movement, because that, that is a goal. We need to add movement. We need to add resistance, but before we can even get there, um, I am teaching them to eat breakfast within an hour of waking up. Yeah. And let's look at what your plate looks like and pay attention to what does fullness feel like? Do you feel satiated? Um, and eat then again, when you're hungry, which is typically about three to four hours after that point, most women are pushing themselves way beyond that window. Um, and, and they're not metabolically stable enough to do that. Like, I'm not talking about somebody who's really healthy and could maybe handle a little bit of intermittent fasting. That is a different situation. But yeah. most women, if if you're in that place where like for me, where I was severely anemic and like the most I could do was a 20 minute walk, like three days a week until my iron stores came up and then my minerals were balanced and my electrolytes were balanced and I was getting enough food to where I'm like, okay, now I know I can push myself. Now I know I can add, and by push myself, I mean, now I know I can add this thing in because I'm getting enough food I'm getting enough sleep. I'm Mm -hmm. taking care of the basic, but metabolic needs of my body. And now I can build off of that place. And so that would be what I would say is let's, let's go back throughout the last 24 hours and see what was happening those 24 hours before you started a workout. Yeah. And And also, you know, just in general, our cycle, Mm -hmm. um, I've been working on cycling my workouts more and more over the last few years. And we created a course on fit to be called fit to be for you or 52 for you where it's heart coded. So there's, um, there's a red heart for the lessons that are low key might be great for when you're on your period, red blood, nice. There's, um, a yellow heart for like maybe right before your period or just when you have low energy. So even if you're not getting a period anymore, because if, if you are postmenopausal, that means you don't get your periods anymore. It's been more than a year since you've had a period. But you still, your body will still do things to cycle. You will still have energy ups and downs. You will still have some hormonal ups and downs. And it's important to work with those. And there's green, which means like, okay, let's pick up speed. You know, imagine the light going from red to green. So you're, okay, I'm getting more energy. Let's go. Let's do some more things. Blue is like, sky's the limit. Yay. Ovulatory. Usually, usually you might have some bloating. You might have some cramping. You might have some moodiness, but there's often a lot of energy Yep. And I think a lot of women get moody and yep. get crampy and don't realize that that also that energy spike that kind of makes you want to fight with everybody at that time of the yeah. month <laughs> yeah. can be really good if you channel it into your workouts. Yep. Right. 100%. And and there is totally. like, I always peak at that point of the month. I'm mm-hmm. always like, I can bench press more reps. I can squat. Everything just feels good. I'm, I'm really in my body at that point of the month. And then like a week later, you know, you hit the luteal before your cycle. And if if there's like this definite slowing down, yellow, light is yellow, we're coming to a stop. And so paying attention to those things too has been huge for me and my clients and offering them color coded workouts to be, yes. make it easier for them to be like, okay, where's my energy level at? Am I blue? Yay. Sky's limit. Or am I yellow? Let's so we got to slow down. We're not a full stop, but yep. let's just slow down. I and that, that offers consistency. And there's a lot of people that poo poo that because they're like, you're not going to reach your goals. You're not going to, I'm like, I'm not trying to be an Olympic athlete here. Yeah. What I'm trying to do is not crash my adrenals and enter right. my fifties, a hot mess. Right. That's my goal. I want right. to be able to still be strong. If, if I've got to go into caregiving again and help a loved one off the toilet five times a day, I'd like to not be able to ruin my spine. Yeah. It's, it's goals like that, that I'm interested yeah. in. 
Exactly. And we do have to redefine our goal then, I think, which is <clears throat> which is the harder work. That's a more emotional process, I think, for women, because mm -hmm. it signifies that we're changing, that we're getting older, that our bodies are different than they were in their 20s. And that can feel to me, I, I didn't feel super sad about it. I felt pretty empowered in the sense of like, hey, this doesn't have to suck. Like I can make changes. This this doesn't have to be a bad thing. But I do think for a lot of us, it is an emotional we're grappling with something, you know, right. and, and that is hard, but I think that understanding what you just said, which is exactly what I was going to kind of like wrap it up with is understanding that it is 100% okay. And it should be, it should look different. Your workout should look different throughout different phases of your cycle and paying attention to your body is honoring that different, like the, the flow that you are flowing through throughout mm -hmm. that cycle where you're slowing down to a stop. Right. Yeah. So that might mean that, um, I'm only able to get in five minutes of weights, like two days before my cycle and 30 minutes of walking. And I'm walking at a slower pace. That's okay. I'm still yeah. moving my body, but I'm just honoring where it's at. And even like, I, um, happened to be on my cycle while we were camping, which if you didn't, watch my stories yesterday. There's a hilarious <laughs> story that only women should listen to, but you need to go back and listen to it. And, um, even though my back was in pain because I was sleeping on a crappy ear mattress, um, we'd gotten a giant, like a big, big cooler. We'd upgraded to a bigger cooler because our girls are getting bigger and we're going on longer trips. And it's like, we need to have a bigger cool cooler, which obviously means when you load that thing with ice and food, it's pretty awesome. heavy. Like, I don't know how heavy it is. And my husband's like, are you sure you can lift this? And I was like, yeah, I, I go, I've been training for this. That's right. And I was like, so excited. So I'm like, this is like a normal, I know that sounds really cheesy, but you've been in my head, Beth, about this. Cause I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to show them that I can do this. And so I'm like, I pay, I was like, I did a breath and I breathed into my core and I squatted and I lifted and I was able to carry it up the beach right? with him without stopping. And he was like, are you sure you're okay? And I was like, yeah. And I actually, I felt my arm while I was lifting. I was like, I actually have a tricep. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I actually I have the muscle. And even though it's not, I was, I was talking about this with the, I did an interview with Leanne Vogel yesterday about how, when your body image doesn't change, like I'm looking in the mirror, I fit the same in my clothes. I haven't quote unquote lost weight yet, but I have these other big wins right? Which is that I now have a totally different set of tools in my mm -hmm. toolbox. Yeah. I can show my kids what strength looks like to, yes. to actually move my body in a way that feels strong. I didn't pee my pants on the beach this time, mm -hmm. like from lifting, which, you know, for all the ladies out there, like that's a pretty big deal to be able to engage your core and not be like scouting out where the bathroom is and wondering if I'm going to have to like haul across the beach to pee somewhere you know what I mean like those and that's huge things. because usually women are getting worse yes usually they get worse yep. and they don't know that they can get better they don't know yep. that as we age muscles don't age muscles crazy atrophy they get thin and wimpy when I'm they're not used. using them right. but when you use them they respond and they will mm -hmm. atrophy or hypertrophy, hypertrophy, bigger or smaller throughout your lifetime because muscles are not skin. They're not exposed to air, right? And same with your mm -hmm. bones. It's all about what they're being stimulated with. So at any point, no matter how old you are, you can interrupt what's happening in your bones and muscles, really in all of your tissues. Yep. Um, right. And that's exciting news because- Yep. Here I am at age 45, truly stronger than I was five years ago. Right. And, which is wild, right? Yeah. And like, I'm like, my body is showing evidence of the struggle with hormones and, and the, like, I can't stop menopause. No, it's going to happen. My body is going to want to put on some extra weight and it has, my body is going to want to get more wrinkles and it has. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, my body will want to do all these things, but I don't have to just lay down and take it. Yeah. There are things I can do to mitigate it, to minimize those effects. And I'm doing what I can. And, and that's what yeah. matters is we all, 
need to do what we can. And sometimes that looks like, look, what I can do right now is a 10 minute walk every day. Great. Yep. Start there. What I can do is a five minute fit to be routine three times a week. Great. Start there. When, when you start, <laughs> it instantly changes everything. And I love that phrase. Um, one day or day one. Yep. What's it going to be? Yep. Exactly. Well, and yeah, and not, you know, I, I think for me, the biggest thing, cause I love routine. I love structure. I love in, having a set plan for something, but I think one of the biggest pieces that I've had to like shift my mindset on is I'm going to give myself like the best every day. And so if that best looks like a chair workout where I'm lifting five pound weights, yeah. that's the best because that's, I'm not harming my back. I'm not overdoing it. I'm still letting my body recover from this trip. And, and if I'm looking at it and I'm like, well, my goal really should be five days a week, but I'm only at two, but I'm doing two consistently. Yes. That's what matters. Then that's my win. And I know that I can build off of that because I now have a positive reward for those right. two days a week. And, and you, so you can also return. Yeah. To that. And, and I, I want that other message to get through that. If you establish a baseline that's sustainable, so if your baseline is two workouts a week, you can go up from there. You're also free to come back down to that. So if you have a surgery, yep. a loved one gets sick, you end up with your 82-year-old right. mother in law living in your house and doing crazy things in the middle of the night, Um, you can still manage that thing. And maybe it reduces or maybe it gets a little bit bigger. We tend to see fitness as this linear line and it simply is not. It right. simply is not. No. It can't be that. Life no. is not that. No. And I think that's the hardest thing for us to wrap our brains around. And I don't well, know if it's because we want stability, we want control, we want it, everything to be static. Is. I would bet it's that. Um, but instead it's choosing, you know, for me, it's every day, like I ran out of, what did I run out of? I ran out of nut milk for my smoothies and I'm like, okay, well, I can't do my two cups of greens in the morning. So I'm just going to like, that would normally in the past have really upset me. Cause that's away from my goal mm -hmm. of getting greens, you know, to help reduce estrogen and all the things. And I was like, no, nope, I've got plenty of greens in the fridge. I'll just have a salad. I've got canned chicken. I can throw some nuts on there. You know what I mean? It's like, you just need to have the tools and then pick the tools when it fits for the day. I'm not going to take another hour out of my day to go to the grocery store. Like it's not going to happen. So I can still make good choices. And sometimes that good choice is rest. And sometimes that good choice is movement. Sometimes it's modified movement. Yeah. Um, and so I just, I love the way you teach and that's not flattery. I know that I say this every time I see you, but it truly is. It's such a different way of doing fitness and it is life-changing. And so you. if you're listening to this, please make sure to go follow Beth at fit. So at fit two, the number two B on Instagram. Um, her website is the same, but I will put that in the show notes for you guys to listen to or to go and, and dig into all of her good stuff. Um, do you have any last parting words for us today, Beth? Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, kind of along the lines of what I just said about day one or one day, like what's today going to be? I was just re-listening to a podcast we did on perimenopause with Dr. Jessica Drummond, amazing, mm -hmm. integrative, functional doctor in New York. One second. And um, my teenager. You're good. Uh, and she was talking about the oak tree and mm -hmm. how like the best time to have planted an oak tree is a couple hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she's like, the next best time is today. Yeah. And, and what we are building in our bodies is not going to be a 200 foot oak tree or 200 year old oak tree, but what we're building in our families and in our communities and with our kids and the legacy that we leave of, of a healthier mindset, better mental yeah. health, better fitness, all of that, breaking the chains of what fitness should look like. Totally breaking the chains of you need to be, <clears throat> to be healthy. Um, that is that 200 year old Oak tree. Yep. And, and, you know, mine's, mine's like, you know, about 20 years old right now. It's decent mm -hmm. sized little Oak tree, mm -hmm. but you know, you can start your Oak tree now. You know, I've got a 19 year old mm -hmm. and um, it's really cool because she works out and my mm -hmm. 16 year old works out. I'm not allowed to watch. 
Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course not. Mom, don't of course watch. <clears throat> I'm just happy that they do it. And I've never been like, you got to do this. Yeah. They're just observing, following, which is yeah. pretty, it's a good feeling. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, I know that you've definitely changed my life and it, you've given me so much permission to be like own my body in terms of what I'm able to do with fitness and even push back, you know, push past certain limitations that I felt like were very restrictive. And so cannot recommend you enough. So thankful, you know, that I get to be your friend and thank you so much for taking the time to be on here with me today. You're welcome.